I firmly believe you guys have been patient enough. So let's get past the teasing. Let's get past just the little tidbits of the good quality action. Let's get right down to it. Today is a rebailing video, but... Having monitored comments for about a year, it has become pretty clear to me that there's a lot of you who actually like me and the crew we get on camera, and that's that's super awesome. The support is great. But there's also a lot of you that pretty much hate me. Hate, hate, hate. Hate, hate, hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. And there's also some comments that are just really, really confusing, so I don't even want to go there. Anyways, for those of you who choose to watch our videos but don't really like me, that's okay. I mean, welcome aboard. I think that you still think that what we're doing is pretty cool, which it is pretty cool. You can hate the announcers of a sports game, but you can still like the sport. Anyways, I'm offering you a hand of mercy. Please fast forward to this timestamp right here, and we'll get back into the actual rebailing action. If you're along for the ride and you enjoy everything else, what I'm doing in like the next five minutes is actually really important and directly correlates to the rebailing process. The rebailing process as a whole does not only take place at the rebailer. There's a lot of background functions that have to take place for a smooth rebailing operation. That's what I'm doing right now. So if you're concerned with the whole picture, follow along with me. If not, fast forward to this timestamp again, and I promise you'll get right to the action. Also, this is my new roommate. Her name is Anya. Beautiful. We have to get ready for the rebailer, right? Well, it's been going all day. We just got done having lunch. But I do want to show you guys the whole dynamic of how it really works. The rebailer is in the green barn behind me. The green barn is not where we have all our hay. We have hay in other barn. We have to continually supply the rebailer with the hay it needs to rebale, <laughs> right? Okay, so I am on the back side of our largest hay barn, which used to be our machine shed. Now all the equipment's sitting out because well, there's no room for it inside anymore. And the eaves of this building are just tall enough to have three large squares in there. Large squares stack three high. I have the Jitney, the JCB TM220. It's yelling at me because I didn't put the part brake on. There we go, no more yelling. I have the JCB TM220 in the mud fest right here. We did put some asphalt grindings down, but they're just, they're done, they're gone. So in the big part of the barn here, we have bundles of really nice quality hay that we're working back through. Okay, some loose ones, whatever. These are all 21 bale bundles of small squares, small 40 to 50 pound bale. On the eaves over here is where we have large squares stacked. So I need to open up that door over there. And once I open that door, I am going to go into what we have proclaimed the large square dungeon. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's like a dungeon in there. Door open. We have large squares over here, which I'm doubting you can see with the lack of light. Here's some right here. But this is going to be a different variety, and I'm not trying to get into that. Around here, golly, I don't know, probably 40 to 50 percent of the hay that we sell, the feed test is important. People are, well, the feed test should always be important, but some people don't care. We keep stuff itemized, even though it's all, not all, even though there could be two or three batches of just Timothy, they do test differently, so that's why we're pulling from specific batches right now. I hope I have the right clicker here. Nope. No. Oh, that's a real bummer. That's not what we wanted. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Truthfully, I don't know how to open that door. I'm gonna have to do some climbing. Scaling this hay was not what I wanted to do right after lunch. <laughs> I don't know how much of that I'll show, but just to give you the rundown, I went in the center part of the barn, scaled this wall of hay, dropped down on these bundles over here, and voila, here I am. Because there's a way to open the door from the inside with the click, whatever. That wasn't the intention. Okay, we called this the dungeon because at first we had the hay stacked one sideways, three running across. We were only grabbing like the two center ones because you couldn't really jockey the machine that well and everything. So it literally was a dungeon. It was just a narrow runway we were going through with hay on both sides of you. It's probably gonna feel like a little bit less of a dungeon now. What's pretty cool, when we bailed all these large squares, we didn't have barons yet. We were still running the Archisons. We thought this part of the barn would be best for large squares because three high, it worked really well and we were handling 
uh, we were handling the Arkansans over top and we couldn't stack three Arkansans bundles high with our, with our top grapple because we'd be hitting the ceiling. Barons, it seems pretty cool. We can flip them three wide and come in here. Maybe we'll just stack small squares and barons in here next year. It's all gonna depend on the weather. These are barons right here and they fit in really well. We had just speared these. That could be a really cool option. Anyways, these are the large squares we're trying to get into. We're back in Jindy. Just to let you guys know, we did stack this barn from the main driveway on the other side of this barn, starting at the back wall here and working out. Now we have different drives and stuff that split halfway, and so I, I am forced to pull from the back to keep continuity of the type and supply of grass. There is not a lot of room to budge when you're lifting these up. It seemed worse off when we stacked them. It felt like it was a lot tighter. But you'll see getting out of the door here that I don't have a tremendous amount of room to play with. See, I mean, that's tall enough. I actually just kind of rubbed the door a little bit. Now I'm on the floor. This proved to be fairly difficult to do with one hand, so I stopped filming a lot of it. But I have opened up the barn a little bit, and I think it's getting into more of those dungeon vibes I was talking about. So just ride with me for this grab and see if you feel the, the dungeon atmosphere I'm getting after. No, it's not like skeletons on chains and the bottom of a castle, but it, it does have a, a dungeon-like feel. Hey, on your right, it's sound dampening. Hey, on your left, big squares of lush green. If that's what you're into, it could be a, could be a style dungeon. Mm. One hand is not what we're going for here. I'm just mad. squares is if you don't have if you have like a funky stack or whatever you can usually remedy it once you get it on the trailer just by pushing it tight so we haven't been putting six large squares on the back of the gooseneck dovetails we've just been putting three right in the center so that's the last one i have to grab so we'll just repent, pretend i do that there you have it the last grab diet mountain dew because i'm watching my waistline 21 bales fresh from the dungeon very nicely made, Timothy Light Orchard Grass. Got pretty good color. The camera's not always that fair to this stuff, but pretty good color, not bad, a nice roughage. Justin called and requested that I go get the gooseneck full of rebaled bundles that are ready from that barn before I take this one over, bring that trailer back and bring that one over. And it makes a lot of sense. Um, so I have a short walk here and I would like to address some of the questions and concerns and comments and everything from the last video where I where you saw us set up the rebaling setup you didn't really see us rebale a lot of people were like this doesn't make any sense why would you be doing that well there's there's quite a few reasons okay first things first we predominantly sell two string small squares in bundles we predominantly sell to the equine market mostly along the east coast of the US uh, this year with the drought out west and stuff we did expand our reach a little bit further west we we sent quite a few loads into Texas. We're talking to a lot of people in Oklahoma. Uh, lot, actually, a lot of stuff went to Arkansas, things of that nature. We don't sell a lot of large squares. We firmly believe that two string bales have a better demand and they are a lot more profitable at the end of the day. Why do we even have large squares to begin with? Okay, the large square baler, it's starting to rain. Let's, let's uh, continue this discussion at some other point. We got the small squares put away in the only real trailer accessible spot we have at the moment, so that's good. Bit of a tight fit, as you can see. Nice. Tight squeeze. We made it. It's all good. We have secured the bag again. So Justin will use the same claw he's using to grab the bundles. And he'll unload the large squares. He will stack large squares right here. This is pretty much the start of it all, so let's go through it. We have the start, the initial product. Right now, it is three by four by about seven and three quarters to seven and a half. Those are the dimensions, three by four by seven and a half feet. Large
large squares, just call three by four. Uh, first cutting Timothy Light Orchard. This is the hay that we made. Now we do buy a lot of hay and rebuild as well, but right now we're still working through the hay that we made. So this is the start of it. Justin, or whoever's running the telehammer, grabs this large square. He wheels the telehammer up. To the start of the conveyor table, where he has to flip them on edge and put them on the conveyor. Pull them strings for me. Yeah. After he puts them on the conveyor, we have our handy dandy axe here that we use to cut five of the six strings on the bale. You leave one string on until you set another bale behind it, then you cut that last string or the bale will explode on the table. Do you have your bale? Not easy, sometimes they don't. There you have it. The biggest waste of this, I hate it, is we'll fill this trash can up like two times a day. If anyone has any idea for all this leftover twine, let me know. No, restringing it through the balers is not, uh, is not an option. So this conveyor, this is called a Messix Bale Converter. This is a conveyor right here that's slowly moving. Watch my finger. See? We set the speed of that to slowly push these bales forward. Make sure the string's off this. Yep, string's off. Into a webbing in there that's constantly going up. It pulls the flakes of these bales off, hopefully one at a time. Moving towards the webbing here. It's going to start grabbing flakes off this bale. That's the reversing auger that we set the clearance on.
spit out 250 bales an hour. That is 100% true. We, we've done it. We've done it for extended periods of time. We have it toned down just a little bit. This hay is a little bit stickier. It's not chewing up quite, quite as nicely. So we have the bale converter itself tightened down. And when it's tightened down, you're not getting as much product through. So we're not quite at that 250 mark. I don't know. We're probably around 200 or something. But we are making nicer bales, which is really, that's, that's the most important part. When you start sending uneven product through, when it hits the baler, uh, sometimes the baler can't keep up and it shoves an extra one or two giant flakes into the bale before it starts its tie cycle. When that happens, sometimes the baler kicks out really long bales. We don't want that because we want uniformity. If the price is X, we want it that size bale, you know what I mean? But beyond that, the barren itself does not tolerate very long bales. So we will have jam ups at the barren where it can't enter the barren's chamber when the bales are longer than like 36 ish or so. And that causes most of the problems actually. So if we just slow down a little bit, there's no stopping. It's like the tortoise wins the mar the tortoise wins the marathon, right? This is pretty much a two-man operation. Uh, three guys are unnecessary. I hop over here from time to time just to check on the product and all that stuff. Or the third guy mainly needs to be moving trucks. So when the trailer gets full of rebale product, the third guy needs to come over here and take that trailer back to the other farm and maybe grab more squares and bring them back over to the guys over here. Yeah, one guy on the floor. Today, that's Rob's lucky day. He just goes around and makes sure that the chaff is nicely recycled back into the windrow. There is certain chaff that we do not put back to the windrow. The chaff that we do not put back to the windrow is basically in two spots, and I will show you. Right here, you get some real dirty finds that occasionally make it underneath that table. We just pull that out, sweep to the center, and the telehandler operator takes a large square and pushes it out the door into the waste pile over there. The other chaff that we don't put back through the windrow is the stuff right underneath the knotter here. It's super fine, and it's pretty dirty, and it's pretty dusty, and it just doesn't belong in horse feed. So we keep the knotter cleaned out. You see it just tied off. We keep the knotters underneath it cleaned out, pulled to the center, and that gets pulled over to the door. All the other chaff is pretty much long stem, and we recycle it back through. strings and now that's a completed bundle in there so as more bundles are stacked up in a group of three and pushed back with the plunger that bale that barren will eventually fall back onto the table robbie custom built this table which works out really well markcrafts the manufacturers of bale barren have their own table they want a little bit of money for it it is what it is i think we have like 50 or 70 bucks in plywood and robbie's ingenuity and we got this and it works great it's real slippery Speed of the actual conveyor. 
what's drawing the large spirits into the webbing. You have the clearance on the reversing auger up there, which stops large chunks from kicking through. That's pretty much the only settings that we play with. This right here, when you're not, when this machine isn't in use, you can actually fold up that whole conveyor, and there's a hitch underneath you can put back on and tow this puppy around. It is on wheels. Inside, you think? Yeah. It's raining, so he's going to keep stacking up inside. So there's three barons put together. Right like that. Perfect. All you can do is what you can do. So this is going to have to get locked in for a while. Here's Justin. Effectively bulldozing out the waste. don't get that much considerable waste. It does suck. Um, I wish it could be wagoned up and given to a cattle farmer or something. Back here is not the most ex accessible portion of the farm. It's pretty muddy. If it froze, maybe we could have a bucket and put it in a wagon or something. But as of now, it just gets pushed up and put into our compost pile over there. <laughs> 